So when it comes to finding any card to any number that fits our style, we all have boxes that we want checked off. Uh, I would say the top ones for me is that I want it to be easy. Uh, I don't want to have to memorize a whole deck or do a bunch of math in my head or uh, do any knuckle busting slides or anything like that. Um, I just want to focus on performance. Uh, the next one is I want it to be completely hands off. I want to put the decks out and never touch them until uh, the trick is done. That leads me to my third one though, is that I want the selection process to seem fair and not confusing or convoluted. So I feel like this version really checks the boxes that are most important to me. So let me walk you through what my version of any card and any number entropy looks like. So I'm a big science fiction fan, and one of my favorite concepts in a movie is in Christopher Nolan's Tenet, where uh, the entropy of objects or people could be reversed, meaning that they would travel backwards through time instead of forward like we normally do. And what that means is, is that if I were to make a change to, say, an object tomorrow, uh, that change would also travel back with that object in time, and we would see that change on the object now. So that's what I've done with this blue deck. I have reversed its entropy, so it is actually moving backwards through time. Whereas the red deck, it's just normal, moving forward through time like anything else in this room. So now going forward, I'm not going to touch these cards again. The spectator will be completely in control of these cards from here on out. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the red deck to arrive at a random number and card. So why use the red deck to make our selection? Well, we have a sort of quirk in our psychology that when we're asked to think of a random card and number, we tend to think of the same ones. Uh, so not very random and it's pretty easy to exploit. So we're going to use the spectator's choices and the randomness of a shovel deck to arrive at a random card and number between 1 and 52. So let's set the blue deck aside for a second. Now the spectator uh, can cut the deck however many times they want. They can also shuffle them. And now that we have our cut and shuffled deck, we're gonna have the spectator choose four cards. So we'll have them deal the top four cards. Now, you give them a choice. Do you wanna go with these four cards or do you wanna do another four cards? I don't want those, let me do another. So, we'll deal another four cards. And maybe they don't want those four cards either. That's fine. They can keep going until they get a four cards they like. So let's say that they're good with these. So now we have four randomly selected cards. Why four cards? Well, the great thing about having four random cards is that when you add the values, and if you count the two jokers as zero, um, you can get any number between one and 52. So on one end, two jokers and two aces would be two, because aces count as one. Um, and then on the other end, if you had four kings, which a king is 13, um, that would be 52. So any other card combination will give you some random number between one and 52. Plus, when it comes to card selection, they're not just pulling out one card, but four random cards that they can choose from. So let's add up these cards. We have 8 plus 2 equals 10, plus queen, which is a 12, uh, will give us 22, plus 5 gives us 27. So our number is 27. Now let's select a card. Let's say they choose the 5 of clubs. So let's recap real quick. At this point, the spectator is the only one that has handled the cards. They've taken a deck, they've cut it, they shuffled it, and they chose four cards at random. Then they added up the value of those four cards to get to their randomly chosen number, and then chose one of those four cards to be the randomly chosen card. So everything's fair and above board. From the spectator's perspective, you haven't tried to force anything or manipulate them in any way. So now to the blue deck. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this blue deck is traveling backwards in time. Now I know what their card is, and I know what their chosen number is. So tomorrow, I'm gonna take their chosen card, and I'm gonna put it at their chosen number. And that change, is gonna travel back in time to this very moment. So the spectator will take the deck and will count down to their number, 27. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. And that is my entropy, any card, any number. Thanks for watching.